Hey everyone, uh, this is Krish, hope you're doing well. Uh, if you can see my t-shirt, this is new merchandise that we had ordered. Uh, we received the shipment. Uh, uh, it's just a few t-shirts uh, and we didn't expect for them to be really fancy. And they're not fancy, but actually the fabric is very good. Uh, much better than I had actually anticipated, so we we're pleasantly surprised. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll order some more and uh, if you know me and if you like some t-shirts let me know. I'm happy to give that to you if it falls within our budget. Uh, okay, uh, now to the purpose of this video. In the last video I discussed Heroku dinos. I called it part 1 because I just discussed a little bit of standard 1x and 2x dinos. I said I'll talk about the performance M and L dinos in, in subsequent videos. Uh, I, I need to get to that this video is not about Heroku dinos. I just want to talk about what I've been working on the last two or three days just because it's fresh in my mind. Uh, uh, scaling horizontally as we grow, uh, there's, there's many, different way, many different ways to scale and if you choose to scale horizontally through adding more hardware like servers, uh, that's generally cheaper. Right? When you have more money, it's generally cheaper uh, because uh, human resources, people are more expensive than servers. So obviously you want to add servers and then uh, see if that will uh, solve your problems or uh, good problems like where you're growing and you need uh, more servers. Uh, but in this video, I want to talk about caching because our budget is, is limited, right? We are bootstrap funded. Um, so uh, even if the server is like $25, $50 more every month, uh, it's, it's, it's big money for us. So uh, I figured uh, I'll take a couple of days of my time just to work on that. Uh, so what I've done right now is implemented caching. Uh, one, I mean, caching can be implemented in various tiers and in several different ways within each tier. So I have some grand plans for caching as we continue to grow. Uh, but at this point, I just want to make the performance be better uh, than it already is. Uh, so personally, if a page takes more than 200 to 250 milliseconds, uh, by a page I'm using the word loosely, but if, if the rendering time is more than that, I tend to get impatient. Uh, my wife is not just as picky uh, and I know other people who might be a bit more willing to wait uh, on the next 100, 200 milliseconds, uh, but it's not my cup of tea, right? Uh, and especially with single page apps, since the whole page doesn't get repainted every time, uh, I tend to notice that even more. Um, so in our case, if something takes more than like 300 milliseconds, I take notice. I want to make sure that your experience is rather seamless. Uh, and uh, very fast as well, right? It needs to continue to be fast. Um, so I took this initial stab at implementing uh, one uh, caching in one tier and just one, in one aspect essentially, right? So scratching the surface, uh, but I deployed the changes yesterday and I'm only seeing uh, uh, quite a bit of improvement. Um, so here's what I've done. I've used uh, the browser's index DB uh, support. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, you know, you could uh, just, just a 30 second uh, intro to that. Uh, you could uh, essentially store your JSON, serialize JSON objects in your browser uh, using IndexedDB and it's, it's, it's a database that sits in your client in your browser and you can structure it any which way you want for it to be uh, to some extent. Uh, or to a large extent uh, and then store your data that thereby reducing the number of API calls you make. So the fewer the number of API calls, I mean when you improve caching there's no like magic wand or a silver bullet. You need to make improvements in many, many different places. One of them is surely uh, to reduce the number of API calls that you make because uh, why ask for the same piece of information if nothing's changed? And even if something's changed, how often do you want to make that request, right? These are design decisions that you need to make because expiration-based caching is obviously a little bit much easier to implement than invalidation-based caching. So given that I had two or three days to spend on this, I have implemented a combination of both expiration-based and invalidation-based caching. Uh, and I can, I'm can actually very excited to see, uh, uh, to share the information that uh, that I've done some testing and I, it, it, the pages perform much faster than they did before I implemented this three days ago. So I've not seen too many APIs take more than like 200, 300 milliseconds. Of course, I'm at, uh, to some extent at the mercy of uh, Heroku's uh, uh, non-dedicated dinos. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, uh, trying to find ways to improve. Uh, so even if there are situations where there is this network latency, that you as end user don't get impacted by that and it, you don't notice the difference, uh, at least to, to a point where you can tell. Uh, with this, what I've done is I've reduced the number of API calls and I have a combination of both expiration-based and invalidation. 
Uh, expiration works in some cases for us, but not in all cases, because uh, you could share your content with other users in the system. Uh, obviously, they are vice, vice versa, they can share it with you. Uh, you will also get badge notifications if some, uh, if you, if you, if some due dates, uh, if you get close to due dates on certain items that you've created in the product, uh, or if somebody sent you a message through the in-app conversations, uh, you'll also get notifications. Um, so if, if I did purely invalidation-based caching, sorry, expiration-based caching, uh, you would have run into stale data occasionally, right? Which is not good. So I've uh, handpicked, uh, and these are design decisions, I've handpicked calls that can, that I could rely on expiration-based caching for. There's a small number of those and others that where I have to do invalidation-based caching. And even with invalidation-based invalidation caching, uh, the devil is in the detail. Uh, depending on how little you want to invalidate uh, at any given point of time, it gets that much more complex. Uh, at this point, I want to say I've been reasonably liberal in what I want to invalidate just so I can get past this initial phase and then I can make further improvements so I don't invalidate uh, uh, even as much as I'm doing right now. So um, check it out. Uh, hopefully you'll notice the difference. Uh, but if you don't, it's just still good because you didn't think it was uh, slow enough to begin with. Um, but you know, it should be blazing fast right now because a ton of uh, content, ton of those APIs are, are cached. So we don't make those redundant calls unless something changes uh, for the most part at least. Um, so you should see, uh, hopefully you should see and feel the improved performance and both on mobile uh, and the web. So I've actually propagated the changes to mobile. I made the web changes like a couple of days back and I worked on the mobile changes yesterday. All of them are deployed and uh, you should be able to enjoy the, the much faster uh, pages right now. Thank you.